Hi, this is AJK and I'm going to talk to you about Iron Maiden. It has nothing to do with the band, it's actually related to Duke Nukem. As Gearbox holds the rights to the character, 3D Realms, the old publisher, decided to put forward a new character, Bombshell. There was a top-down game, but it went completely under the radar. And now there is this old-school first-person shooter made in the same engine as Duke Nukem 3D Blood and Shadow Wild, the build engine. I appreciate this revival of old school first person shooters that we are seeing these days with among others Dusk that I find excellent. Okay, so how is this new Iron Maiden? For now, it's just a preview of two levels and not the final complete game. But unlike other critics, I did not enjoy this game. I asked myself, what are the fundamental pieces that build one of these games that I like? The answer is in several parts. From good feeling, like fast movements and powerful weapons, interesting fights, and a good level design, with levels that are pleasant to discover with some variety. And finally, even if I don't care about the story, I'm looking for an interesting setting, a unique atmosphere. So now we have three points to analyze Iron Maiden. Weapons, level design and atmosphere. And I'll start with the weapons. The shotgun is usually a standard weapon among these games and a good way to judge them among each other. Here I have to say that I was quite disappointed. It doesn't have much spread, it's not very powerful, I don't like to use it. It's not as devastating as it should be. The Magnum as a base weapon is also not very enjoyable to use. The firing rate is too slow and it needs to be reloaded every 6 shots. The machine gun is much better, but what's best is some sort of homing bowling ball. It's fun to use, it's unique and it lets this game stand apart from others. So as a conclusion, on the weapon side, it's not very exciting, except for the bowling ball. And also, aiming is not always super smooth, it's not the most enjoyable. And an issue, which is actually related to level design, is that most of the fights are taking place from long range. It can even become hard to distinguish enemies under the crosshair, because they are so far away. Most of the enemies have hit scan weapons bullets that can go straight to the player, so you cannot dance between slow moving fireballs, and the fights are not so interesting. Only sometimes there are traps with enemies suddenly coming from behind walls or doors, which pumps up the adrenaline. There is life to pick up, but it's actually hard to distinguish, and there are health kits that you can use whenever you want on the right click. I never needed them, except against the final boss, which was not very interesting either, I only needed to stay behind some concrete, which was a better tactic than just being out in the open and dying in a few seconds. So right click for health, there is no iron sight. To go back to level design, there are tons of secrets, which is great, but otherwise progress in the levels is not very smooth, the levels are ugly, a lot of the areas are looking similar, and the outside is very chaotic, with very long and big courtyards. It feels like games from the beginning of the years 2000, when developers were not anymore restricted to small levels, they suddenly started making huge empty levels. Similarly, there aren't too many 3D details in the rooms, rather than the rough textures of the 90s. On the other hand, the sprite of the enemy cyborgs are very ugly, they are weirdly elongated, and they feel like the wars of the 90s. This is a cyberpunk universe, but not very fancy. It doesn't stand out, it doesn't let the player travel to unique and amazing places. Yeah, sure, Iron Maiden is so old school that it could have been released toward the end of the 90s, but if that had been the case, no one would still remember it in 2018. It would just merge in the nameless blob of the games of that era without standing out. And now, in 2018, Duke Game 3D is still as good as ever, and Brutal Doom happened to exist, with a very smooth and orgasmic gameplay. The developer of Brutal Doom also released his own campaign with big maps, but the level design is much more interesting. Brutal Doom is more like the next logical step for these kind of games. So for $20, I'd 
don't especially recommend this game. It's not a catastrophe, it's just too average. I don't see why someone would choose to play this rather than playing again an old classic. If you want a recent old school game, Dusk is my favorite. I hope you enjoyed this video, bye bye.